Hello Drummers and Other Creatures. This is another video in a series that's looking at how we can develop our coordination using the samba foot pattern and different stuff to do with our sticks. In the first couple of videos, number one, I showed you how to play some patterns individually with each hand and work out how you combine those movements with the foot pattern. Uh, in the second video, I was playing sort of broken 16th single stroke patterns, uh, all based on the sort of table of time, Takadimi matrix thing. I'll link to that in the comments. Uh, and in this video, we're going to look at playing accented single strokes. Now, first of all, a disclaimer. I'm not pretending to introduce you to anything really much to do with Brazilian samba music. Um, I'm not a specialist in the topic, but I like using this pattern because it, it offers lots of interesting opportunities for developing coordination between the limbs and also gives the feet a really good workout, I think, getting that boom, 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 boom with the bass drum. If you work that up to some speed, um, it's a really great workout for then getting sort of like uh, quick succession double strokes on the bass drum. Not so easy in bare feet, but um, that kind of thing. So that's what we're looking at today. Um, if you want to learn more about Brazilian music, I'm going to put some links to my favorite Brazilian drummers and educators and uh, check them out. I'm not the guy for that, really. Okay, now, um, by the by, if you find this enjoyable, um, please make sure that you leave me a comment in the comment section of this video, or even if you find it not enjoyable, leave me a comment and let me know what you thought and what, what you think I could do better. Uh, make sure you subscribe to the channel if you want to be kept up to date on anything interesting that comes up, my new video releases, any posts I might make on YouTube if I remember to do that. Uh, also, you can give me a little donation with a Buy Me To Coffee linked in the description and um, what else is there? I'm a drum teacher and all of that. So if you think uh, you like my style and my presentation, my attitude, the way I explain things or whatever, um, look me up, come to my website, send me an email, and let's see if I can help you in some way develop your drumming in a one-on-one -on -one lesson scenario. Right, let's get on with today's messing around thingy. So just in case you haven't seen the other videos or if for some reason you're not familiar with the pattern, we're going to play what's generically known as a samba bass drum ostinato, ostinato simply meaning a repeating pattern of some sort, um, and we're going to start off with that. Um, I, I won't worry about counting it now, I'll just play it for you a little bit and then I'll explain it. no hands there and we ju just just get yourself playing that a little bit the count we're going to think about it in sixteenths and you could count it sort of again in, in the uh, proper official samba count you'd be looking at a count of maybe two four quite commonly but you'll also see people counting this as four four but if we count it as two four just to keep life simple the bass drum is going a uh, one e and a uh, two e and a uh, three e and a uh, four e and a uh. i'm counting sixteenths one e and a uh, two e and a uh, three e and a uh, four e and a uh, one a uh, two e and a uh, three e and a uh, four e and a uh. and the hi-hat played with the foot I'm playing a nice crisp chick sound on the ands. One E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a. So let's have another listen to that. Um, most of the time I'll play that with a sort of heel up uh, approach on the hi-hat. Uh, if you're not used to doing that, keep your heel down, but to get the crispness, you can kind of roll the ball of your foot through the pedal. So you'd be raising up your heel as you close the hi-hats together, but you wanna get a nice crisp sound. You don't have to make a very big stroke necessarily with the hi-hat cymbals. So let's listen to that again. One E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a. Next, we're going to be playing single strokes with accents, but our bass line will be no accents at all. I'm just gonna play some 16s, nice little taps that are a sort of low height. I don't want to be 
too specific about that, but, you know, strokes where the tip of the stick stays a few centimetres from, um, from, the, from the snare drum. Uh, so I was just trying to think, quite a few of you will be inch orientated, but uh, a little bit fewer inches than centimetres. A low kind of stroke. I'll do it on the hi-hat just to make it clear what sort of strokes I'm playing. And I'm keeping my hands as relaxed as possible, but I'm not allowing the sticks to wobble around too much there for these taps. Nice, soft strokes, and we're going to play those a little bit and see if we can coordinate them nicely with the foot pattern. Uh, you can approach this any way you like. You might want to start playing the 16ths on the snare and then add the feet. You might want to play the foot pattern for a little bit and then start adding the hands, uh, which is what I'm going to do now. Um, that's the way I prefer to approach this at the moment, but always try different things. If I say, do something this way, don't listen to me too much. Try what I'm saying, maybe. I might have a clue, but if it doesn't work for you, there are other, other ways to approach things. So let's go uh, foot pattern and then adding the 16th. Remembering that the count, I'll go one e ana, two e ana, three e ana, four e ana. We can count in two, four if you like. Now on its own, this is already quite a sort of challenging bit of coordination. The main reason being, and, and maybe I feel slightly uh, guilty for explaining this because maybe you, you wanna just work this out for yourself, but uh, the spirit of YouTube seems to be making everything very explicit. Forgive me, cruise ship drummer, my idol. But um, we're going to be playing the bass drum uh, the, of the, on the R, so we have one E and R, that bass drum that falls on the R will be uh, right foot and left hand together. Uh, and when we play the hi-hat with the left foot, that's gonna be a, a right-handed stroke. So, um, yeah, the, the sequence of these things is that you're gonna have the hi-hat, say, on the and of any count, and that's gonna be right hand, left foot, and that immediately is followed by a bass drum and the um, left hand. So we have this combination of right hand, left foot, left hand, right foot. And that is uh, ripe, pregnant with opportunities for flamming. And so before we even get into all that juicy accent stuff, you're gonna try and sit with this and see if you can relax into playing it really nice and tidily. And if this takes you some time, don't worry, I've been working on this for years and sometimes I get quite flammy with those kind of right foot, left hand, or uh, left hand, right foot, whatever. The, the crossover combination of uh, a left limb plus a right limb and a right limb plus a left limb. So get yourself relaxed, enjoy it, take your time, play just the taps for five minutes or so. Maybe just go away and practice that for a little while. Uh, day after day to get comfortable if you feel like you'd like to do that instead of rushing to the next step, okay? So a little bit more taps just to, to notice what's going on. So we're gonna try and play everything as evenly as possible. Even bass drum, the hi-hat strokes the same, and let the snare drum stroke sound the same as well. Um, when you first start doing this, you might find that everything's a bit wonky and wobbly and that you've got dynamics all over the place. Don't worry about it. It's all about being relaxed, learning to be aware of yourself, letting your body work it out. Now, we're going to add the accents, and I'm, I'm gonna follow the Takadimi matrix. Um, that again, this is a sheet of, of the 16 possible combinations of four notes that um, lots of drummers uh, use this as a kind of template for working out different coordination and, and different patterns in general. Uh, and I, 
as I said, I think already, there'll be a link to the, the, the patterns, but we're just gonna start off now. Now we've got like a, a set of like zero, right? So I've got takademi and I'm, I'm, I'm using takademi to count my sixteenths and zero accents means we're just playing the taps in the way I just demonstrated. And then we've got four single accent possibilities. We've got an accent on the ta, we've got the accent on the ka, we've got an accent on the d, Ooh, sorry, no offense, we've got an uh, accent on the me, okay, one accent at a time. So let's get the uh, taps going again, and then I'm going to play each accent on its own a little bit, and just listen to myself and see if I can feel nice and relaxed. Now, because I'm doing this with a pair of sticks on the snare, I'm not playing like massive accents, going to raise my stick up to here like I'm uh, auditioning for a Foo Fighters gig and, you know, trying to smack the snare, but just to pull out a nice... Uh, bright sounding accent that has a good contrast um, with the with the taps. Bear in mind, if this is a little bit new to you, you might find that you're starting to play the accents will lead to your taps gradually increasing in, in level. So notice yourself, maybe uh, record yourself or video yourself and listen back and just check if you're keeping that nice low level of the uh, stick tips for the taps. And then when you're playing the accents, raising the stick a little bit higher and getting a nice popping sound. Okay, let's have a go. So I'm just going to start with the first accent, which is taka dimi, taka dimi, taka dimi, taka dimi. If we were counting that, that'd be the one, two, three, and four of our 16th note count, right? So here we go. Okay, that was the first one, taka dimi, okay? Next we're gonna accent the ka, taka dimi, taka dimi. So my accent is with the left hand this time. Then the D, we're accenting the ands. Finally, the me. And I often find that when I'm concentrating on, on an exercise like this that's very technical, it tends to make me tense up. And uh, because I'm just focusing on sort of a certain level of precision and I, I'm trying to get as good as I can at noticing the tension and then just sort of letting it, letting it go. It, that, that's one of the big challenges, I think, of learning how to play this instrument, learning to notice tension, We're not judging ourselves, I'm not giving myself a bad time about it or a hard time about it. I'm just letting it go. OK. All right. So those are the four single accents. Then we've got double accents, and there are six double accents out of the possible combinations of four notes. So we've got the, um, um, well, I suppose I'll go, I'll go in the order that it appears in my Takademi Matrix. Um, it's kind of arbitrary, but it's just a way I like to remember it. But we've got first the ta and the mi. Taka di mi, taka di mi, taka di mi, taka di mi. So we've got the two outside accents. Then we've got the Kadi, um, the sort of inside accents, taka dimi, taka dimi, taka dimi, taka dimi. Then we've got the what we've we got next. Say taka. We've got the first first two notes accented. Taka dimi, taka dimi, taka dimi, taka dimi. And then we've got the dimi, taka dimi, taka taka dimi, taka dimi. Finally, we've got what would just be the eighth notes, the ta and the d, taka dimi, taka dimi, taka dimi, taka dimi. And finally, we've got the e's and r's, or the ka and the mi, taka dimi, taka dimi, taka dimi, taka dimi. And you've got a series of things there. Each one of them presents little challenges to your coordination, to your brain's wiring that, um, you know, are good to kind of sort out. 
Uh, bear in mind, what I'm doing, I'm playing these at a certain tempo. I think it's reasonably slow, but if you're having a go with any of this stuff, uh, you know, you can play it a bit slower than me. You can play it a bit faster as well if it comes out all right. Uh, the idea would be gradually over time to build up the speed at which you can do this stuff. But first and foremost, the priority is do it at a slow enough tempo that you can A, work out the pattern uh, and, and get it just moving consistently. And that it's also slow enough that you can play it with a good degree of coordination, that you have minimal flumming going on when you're playing this. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go through those combinations of two notes just to give you an idea what this sounds like. Um, you don't have to practice all of these patterns at once. You don't have to practice all of these patterns at all. You can just choose some of them and, and start working on them. And there's loads of other ways you can kind of get into doing stuff like this. Uh, there's a method using uh, syncopation or any other reading exercises that's kind of cool. Um, you can go through some actual uh, sort of Brazilian rhythm vocabulary, which is really cool. I might look at that at some point. Uh, you know, there's lots of different ways to do it. This is a bit dry, but it lets us just focus on the mechanics of the thing. Uh, all right, so uh, let's go. Without further ado, here we go. Fire, one, two, three, fire. Uh, here we go. I think I did double of one of them there, didn't I? But not to worry, you've got the idea there. Once you've got the hang of those, you've then got the three patterns. There are four, three combinations. So you've got like chaka D, chaka D, chaka D. You've got mm, kadimi, kadimi, kadimi. Then you've got taka, mi taka, mi taka, mi taka, mi. And ta, di, mi, ta, di, mi, ta, di, mi, ta, di, mi. Each one of those, you can practice. Don't forget, don't, don't go away and try and play it all in sequence if this is new to you. Um, yeah, be your own judge. Always take things slowly. Maybe you just start with the four individual accents and really allow yourself to relax into that over a, a period of time. I don't, I don't want to speculate what that period of time might be, but no rush. All right. Now, once you've got the hang of all those... Oh, and the, the last one, obviously, Takadimi, you've got all the four accents as well. Just obviously might be handy to have that under your belt. Um, now, the idea, I think, with, with any kind of technical exercises is to do a little bit of improvising every time you do it. Uh, if you feel like you've got the hang, for instance, just the individual uh, patterns, uh, or the individual accents, sit down and try and improvise with that, even in your first session, if you're feeling remotely comfortable with it. If not, okay, allow yourself some time to really settle in. But if you're feeling comfortable with it, just improvise it. What do I mean? Just think, right, I've got accent on a tar, accident, accent, accident? No, I hope not. No accidents, please. Accent on the tar, accent on the car, accent on the D, accent on the me. Play each one of those a little bit, but just, I don't know, make it up as you go along. Just pick something. So we're going... Anything that just allows you to feel your way through those things and get your body and your brain used to developing a spontaneous ability to make things happen. It's a good way to introduce yourself to improvising and solos if you haven't done this before. Um, once you feel like you can improvise on the single ones, you can add the double ones in, or you might just find that you're just able to sort of do it off the cuff once you've spent enough time getting used to the accent patterns. And then finally, uh, 
go through the same things but play the accents on the toms. And as a starting place, maybe just any right-handed accent on the floor tom, any left-handed accent on your high tom, and just kind of stick with that uh, for starters. And as you get more relaxed with it, you'll find that you can sort of move things around more freely, right? Um, when you start improvising anything new, do it as simply as you possibly can. So I'm going to do an example of that now. I'm just going to keep that same sort of tempo and I'm going to start throwing some patterns around. I'll start with the snare and then I'll include the toms and that'll give you a bit of an overview of where something like this goes. Here we go. Relaxed and easy, eventually you want to speed it up. When you get comfortable, a little bit cocky, it's all going well, try doing it at a faster tempo. When you get things moving at kind of a fair clip, it can be quite fun. I can, I can sit and entertain myself with this stuff for good periods of time and um, something like this. Maybe we'll go a little bit faster. was compositionally suspect but that's the thing that's improvisation for you it's fun so it's not Brazilian but it's samba it's a really nice way to learn how to play accents to improve your coordination um, when you get the thing up to speed obviously it's a really good workout for your bass drum foot and uh, if you get the, the left foot the hi-hat foot um, sort of supporting things nice and solidly. And I suppose that must be the end of that then for today. I hope you find this useful. I hope you go away and take some of these ideas and have a go at them and then come back and let me know how it went because I'm, I'm really legit interested to see if presenting ideas like this is at all helpful. Meanwhile, hit the bell, like the thingy, subscribe to the channel and so on and so forth. And, uh, most importantly, go off and practice. <laughs>